the basic principles of photoelectron spectroscopy. We know in spectroscopy we study the interaction of electromagnetic radiation or light with a material or sample. From the interaction we derive many information about the sample. So what kind of information do we obtain from photoelectron spectroscopy? We can mainly use this technique to identify the elements present in a material. A material may be composed of single or many elements carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, sodium, chlorine, gold, could be any element. We can also detect the oxidation state or electronic state of the element. One key feature of photoelectron spectroscopy is surface sensitivity, which means that the information we derive comes mostly from the surface and the near surface regions. This is the reason the photoelectron spectroscopy is referred as a surface technique. Now you have, uh, you have noticed during the study of other common spectroscopic techniques like UV visible spectroscopy and infrared spectroscopy, what we do there? We shine an electromagnetic radiation, UV visible uh, energy range and infrared uh, region energy range to the sample and the radiation passes through the sample. Okay, so what we do, we measure the amount or wavelength of light absorbed by the sample or the amount or wavelength of the light transmitted by the sample. This way, we identify which particular wavelengths are interacting with the sample. But photoelectron spectroscopy is entirely different. Here, we shine a material with X-ray light or X-ray photons and from the material electrons are ejected. These electrons are called photoelectrons. We analyze the photoelectrons and obtain various informations. Uh, you already know this photoelectric effect, this as photoelectric effect. It was uh, first discovered in 1886 by Harge and then was sufficiently explained with quantum conce concept of light by Albert Einstein in 1905. Look at the, the fundamental equation of photoelectron spectroscopy is that the binding energy of an electron plus its kinetic energy is equal to the incident photon energy. For a solid sample, another parameter called work function is also added. So for in this case, we have incident photon energy is equal to binding energy plus kinetic energy plus work function of the sample. So by using a particular photon energy and by analyzing the kinetic energies of the photoelectrons, we determine the binding energies. An obvious question, what is binding energy? Binding energy is the amount of energy with which a particular electron is bound to the nucleus of an atom. So it is the characteristic of a particular element and a particular electronic shell. So binding energy provides us the electronic information about the sample. Another aspect of photoelectron spectroscopy is that it is a vacuum technique like many other state-of-the-art techniques. The reason we need vacuum is that X-ray sources and electron analyzers need a vacuum for their operations. And also, electrons have very low inelastic mean free path in case of collision with particles. So they cannot survive. This is the reason we need very high vacuum. If you look at the timeline of various spectroscopic methods, you will notice that the photoelectron spectroscopy has been operational only around 1960s. Because of the development of vacuum equipments and high resolution electron analyzers which were not available before. In, Kais, in 1960s, Kai Sigban, working at the Uppsala University of Sweden, developed high resolution analyzers and identified the shift of binding energies of chemical species. It has pioneered the extensive use of photoelectron spectroscopy as a characterization technique. That's why XPS is also called ESCA, the electron spectroscopy for chemical analysis. 
so this is all about the basic principle and introduction of photoelectron spectroscopy